I noticed there's been some uh, activity lately regarding the SSPX, like thoughts on it by some um, bigger names. So I just wanted to kind of share in this really short little video why we attend an SSPX parish and point you to some um, resources so that you can do your own research and you can figure out for yourself whether it's something you feel com comfortable or confident in doing. Um, because I just think there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of heresy regarding, I'm not heresy. Um, yeah, you know, regard hearsay regarding, you know, people saying, well, I heard, well, I heard, well, I, they're in schism, they're blah, blah. They're not in schism. So this is the situation, um, is that Bishop Lefebvre was, you know, practicing the old right along with, you know, other people. Hey, and, um, and, you know, the, the whole thing about, you know, well, now we have to do the new mass came out. And so Bishop Lefebvre is like, you know what, I'm just going to retire because I'm not going to perform the new mass. Like, what is this? This is not the mass that I was, uh, confirmed in, you know, that I became a priest in that I practicing. And all of a sudden I'm told, I mean, we were, to they were told this is so weird that the old right is like not a, a valid sacrament, you know, s sacrifice of mass anymore. And that all the marriage and the confirmation and confession, baptism, that those are, those old rites are no longer valid. That doesn't make any sense. It's been practiced for, I think it was at least the 500s, if not earlier, when the new mass was create, like, you know, put into place and the Latin rite. And I'm not going to know, I don't know super good details on this, but I'm just kind of giving you an overview. So, um, you know, so he was like, I'm just going to retire. I'm not going to do this new mass thing. But then a bunch of seminarians were like, what are you doing? Please don't leave us. And, and priests, they're like, I don't want to do this new thing. Like, yes, yes, obedience to Rome. I know, like, we love to use the word obedience, especially right now. Because it makes life so easy to just say, I'm just going to be obedient to the Pope. I'm going to go do whatever I need to do in whatever part of my life, as long as the Pope says it's good. Even though the Pope has said things that don't correlate with the whole 2,000 years of church teaching, I'm just going to do whatever the Pope says. Now, you guys, we can talk about papal, infall papal, papal infallibility at the end here, but for this section, I just kind of want to talk about the SSPX. So, um, so you know, he said, okay, well, gosh, let me just... So they pretty much begged him into creating the Society of St. Pius X, and they were like, okay, we're just going to keep doing the old right. Well, they were told to stop it, and they were like, no, because, again, there was nothing there. It, You know, you have to ultimately answer to Christ, right? And it was like, okay, this, this sacrifice of the Mass is in the language that was on the cross, Latin. This sacrifice of the Mass has the priest facing east, just like Moses did, guiding them up the mountain. This sacrifice of the Mass privately prays to Jesus Christ alone with the priest and the people participate reverently, but it's not this community like kumbaya thing. It's, it is a sacrifice of the mass. It's very serious. It echoes the, uh, the, you know, the sacrifice and the prayers within the temple that the Levites would have done anyway. So they start the society, right? And then ultimately I think what happened was the, Bishop said, look, I'm aging out. Some other people are aging out. I need to make new bishops. And he mess. I think it was Pope Paul, Pope John Paul II at this point that said, no, I'm not letting you make more bishops. And he goes, okay, well, I'm still going to make more bishops. And so then they were supposedly excommunicated. And then Pope Benedict comes around and he goes, okay, no, you're not excommunicated. No one ever had the right to like, um, eradicate the old right that was not something that the church had the right to do and there's pope paul the fifth okay i'm forgetting who that is there's a pope Pius the fifth there's somebody out there with a five in their name that said you can never get rid of the mass like that you can't change the mass you can't get rid of the mass like this is the mass and so um you know so everything that's going on is just frustrating and silly but um so anyway, that's what, so that's what you have. You have the SSPX that, that just kind of continued forward from 1969, 1970, when the new mass took effect. 
and persevered and reverenced the tradition and then people over that course of that time have found them and then in 2007 or 2008 when pope benedict said look you can now everyone can practice the, the latin right um oh i also want to say here's the thing that debunks the whole sspx's and schism or whatever thing uh pope paul the sixth allowed a town in 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 england to continue praying the old right because agatha christie and a bunch of other people wrote him a letter and we're like you know even though agatha christie wasn't catholic she's like this is the mass that i talk about in my books this is the mass that is like so amazing his channel is called reclaiming the sword um you should be able to find links like if you look through my um my my posts on here and or you can go to my youtube channel and i linked it there too um so you guys are just you're asking about ryan's channel um okay so sspx so what i'm trying to say is that pope paul the six kind of debunked the whole idea that the latin right was ever eradicated there's a big word for that because he allowed this town in in england to continue to do it this whole time to perform that mass so it's funny because people let's just get let's just jump to, to modern day okay so I, you guys know that like without the sspx you would not have the fssp or the institute of christ the king so what happened was so let's talk about like the sspx today and like what the problem is you know because they're supposedly not in full communion with rome now i haven't looked it up per se but you guys know there's a new canon law right so like there was a 19 I think it was in 1910. I don't remember exactly what year it is. Canon law. Because Pope Pius X was the first one to like put together the canon law like into one cohesive book. And it should have stayed that way. But then in 1983, there was a new canon law because you had to make a new canon law because there was a new mass and everything was new, new, new. And we all we know that this is a form of Mason infiltration. I'm going to go there. Because if you think about the um and marxism because we think about the whole idea of marxism and even like the french enlightenment it was everything was about new and that that word new it's it's just it has all of its roots in communism this idea that we need to redo things because somehow the old is bad and the new is good even though the new rips apart the old and strips the altars and brings the altars forward like a pagan church and does all these terrible things makes it to where a bunch of us Catholics are brought up with complete ignorance of our faith and like do all sorts of crazy sin and have hard lives because we don't know that there's a better way. And um, I'm trying to keep my St. Gertrude and Jesus in the background for you guys. Um, and so, uh, okay. And so they're in like, supposedly they're in communion, but not, you know, full communion because, um, they have some questions about the Vatican II documents. And so I did print out the only Vatican II document I read in full is the opening remarks. You can find them online. And I was really turned off by it. Like, uh, that's probably a terrible phrase to use. I'm sorry. I was like uh, a bit disturbed by the opening remarks because it was very much this, look at me, we're so great. We're doing this new thing. We are so awesome. This has never been done before. Hoorah for us. Okay. <laughs> Hooray for us. It was weird. It was weird. It didn't feel like the church, but, and, uh, so anyway, I have the two main documents printed out. I'm going to read them. Actually today would probably be a good day to read them. And then I, and then people can stop accusing me of not reading the Vatican II documents. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but the SSPX, like there's no intention of schism there. They love mother church and that's the thing you guys mother church does not exist from 1970 to today mother church exists from the very first moment i mean you could argue from pentecost or some people argue from the foot of the cross that's when mother church began okay and so uh okay crux fidelis if that's true about the institute of christ the king where did they did they continue with i'm just talking about the roman right like where did they learn the roman right if it wasn't from the sspx did they have they always been around and just been kind of underground or 
that's what that was my only thing um but yes i have heard that before i wasn't trying to imply that like they're the only re well yeah i'm gonna stop babbling i totally lost my train of thought now someone tell me where i was i'm just like randomly talking to you i don't have a speech plan or anything what was i gonna say anyway they have some issues with the vatican II documents the sspx and so they've asked for clarification and the response from rome was like yeah that's good you come to rome and explain to us your issue and they're like no 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 can you tell us can you explain to us the the issue like we are the you know we're the popes and we're, we're the priests and bishops here oh mother church thank you yeah so mother <laughs> mother church has been around for two thousand years and so what I think of when I think of being a Catholic, I think of, okay, yes, we, you know, there's this, there's this, there's this argument out there about being blindly obedient to the Pope. I blindly go get my shot because the Pope told me to, I don't care about the babies. I just go get my shot. I'm not saying I do. I'm saying this is what people say, right? The Pope says good. I'm going to go do it. I blindly follow the Pope. The death penalty is no longer okay. That's a terrible thing. You know, I, I don't like the death penalty personally, but that's not the church's stance for the last 2000 years on the death penalty. Uh, you know, I blindly um, put the environment above aborted babies. I mean, I don't know, whatever you can spin all sorts of things that the Pope said recently. That's super weird, super weird. So, you know, I mean, let's not even get into like Patchy Mama and uh, Martin Luther celebrations and things like that. So, cause I don't talk about the Pope in public. <laughs> I just pray for him. But what I'm trying to say is that we can't be like, make, Pope Francis is not Mother Church. Pope Francis is currently in the chair of Peter and he deserves our respect. He deserves, his words deserve, deserve an assumption of truth and a discernment with the Holy Spirit and with our conscience. But we should strive for obedience to our Pope, right? But yet God has given us reason. He's given us a conscience and we have to still look at the church as a whole regarding its teachings. So the dogmas of the church never change. There's a list of dogmas on the, actually I was thinking about doing a video where I literally just, um, where I'm literally just going to read you guys all the dogmas of the church. And the, yes, baby. Hi. Hi. So the dogmas of the church have to be, have to be followed. And you know, those are the things that I didn't grow up knowing about. Like you cannot use birth control. Okay, like, I know that's not a listed dogma, but I'm just saying, like, there are really strong truths that have always existed. And one of the truths is that we can never, ever support abortion. And so saying that you can take a shot that has been, was developed using aborted baby parts, the church should be hands down saying, no, you can't. Okay, we like, can't. But yet it's not saying that. And that's what's really scary. And so you really have to say, okay, I'm going to take, so just like if you're discerning that, that specific issue regarding, should I, should I get this shot or not? You take 2000 years of the church's teaching regarding the value of life, the dignity of life, the, the, the necess necessity of a proper burial, the necessity of treating our, this, the, the dead with respect and the fact that you cannot murder an innocent and you take all of that, and there's no such thing as child sacrifice, right? That the church fought that from day one. And you parallel that with the idea that the church is now saying that, well, because what happened in the 70s and 80s were decades ago, it's okay to use a shot that was developed because we might die. And oh my gosh, even though, you know, we should never be making decisions out of fear like that, because of course we will all die. We should be excited to die. That is what all the saints do. What is it? Go away. Do you have some uh, pie food? Yes. Yay! Oh, go get my package. All right. So, so yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I've said, I think I've said everything. So, so getting back to the SSPX, I just meant this to be really short, you guys. Um, <coughs> sorry, I have a cold. Um, it's just, it's one of those things where you really, you really need to do your own research and not just listen to the loudest Catholics. Not listen to the Catholics who have the biggest followings. Not listen to the Catholics who have not done the research. So I'm not saying I'm 100% right about the SSPX. I'm saying that I have done, that Ryan and I have prayerfully determined 
we prayerfully discerned, you know, what our options are right now for holy sacrifice in the mass. What are our options? They're not very good, right? We got Germany in at large, which I wouldn't trust right now because they are they are in schism. That's the crazy thing. There are legit schismatic actions happening within the church in different countries, and yet for some reason the Pope's focusing on, you know, the Latin Mass, and then and then Catholics themselves are like focusing on the SSPX. I'm like, why don't you guys all have a hissy fit about German German priests and like blessing gay unions and I don't, you know, whatever. Oh, giving interfaith communion and saying they want to get rid of the priesthood. And like, why, why isn't this a bigger issue? So, um, what was the thing I was going to say? So SSPX. So, you know, we had to weigh our options. And so we had, you know, we drive an hour away to an S. Oh, and then we have like the fact that, you know, when we got here, we were in lockdown. We don't know the language. We tried to go on post to the Novus Ordo and got kicked, like pretty much got kicked out after three days, three, three masses because we wouldn't wear a mask above our nose and Ryan would take his off to go to communion. Who would have thought taking your mask off to walk up to our Lord and Savior out of respect, you know, can't do that. Um, and so, you know, we contacted multiple traditional Latin masses within the one hour vicinity this was the first place it got back to us. We went, it was a good fit. And we're like, check the box. We're staying here because everything was such a crazy up in the air. So if I had an SSPX next to an FSSP, what would I do? I'd probably go to both <laughs> at this point. Having done the research that I've got done, I would probably go to both. And I would feel out if I could understand the homily, because I can't understand my homily, I would feel out where the priests are, you know, is... Because I don't really have an issue with, like, saying whether Vatican II is, you know, good or bad, whatever. You know, like, I do I think it was a mistake? Yeah. But but can I undo history? No. I mean, the church can. I think it was uh, Bishop um, Archbishop Vigano who said they could, like, get rid of Vatican II, like, um, completely, which would be pretty crazy. But the the new mass is, I, as far as I understand, the new mass is a bit separate with, you know, Bugnini and his changes and things. <clears throat> okay. I'm like losing my, lose my steam here, guys. Um, yeah. So I guess here's the thing. Do not blindly follow anybody in life unless it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm not trying to sound like a Protestant. I love you Protestants if you're on here, but I'm not trying to sound like a Protestant, but he is our, our savior and our King. And so if you are making a decision that you couldn't do in front of Jesus Christ, like if you, let's just say, if you attend a Novus Ordo where there is a lot of irreverence and you know there's an SSPX priest, priest down, the, down the street that's incredibly reverent and you're sitting in the Novus Ordo and you're like, Jesus, I'm doing this because, you know, the Pope said that I can't attend the SSPX. That's just so scary. Like... I mean, I don't know. If that's your decision, that's fine. But don't judge the people that don't judge people that go to the SSPX. Don't don't judge anybody when they're trying to all they're trying to do is go is live their lives as best they can, pursue the narrow path and and do whatever gives them the most grace. Because we have to have grace to run this race, to persevere to the end, to become saints. And so if I have two choices in a church, I'm always going to choose the more holy church because there is such a thing as grace abounding from the priest based on their holiness. If you go to a clown mass versus a, a, an SSPX mass, you're going to notice there's a difference in grace. You're going to notice a difference in the grace in the congregation itself. It doesn't mean everyone's perfect. No one's perfect, but, but you're going to notice it to some extent. I'm not saying every Novus Ordo is a clown mess. I've gone to some really reverent Novus Ordos. And I know some people who go to Novus Ordos that are like literally like a Latin mass. But the thing is that you guys don't understand, that a lot of people don't understand is that the old rite has so many more prayers and so many more signs of the cross and so many more aspects to it that were stripped out of the new mass that you cannot make the new mass into the old mass. But that's probably another topic. Anyway. You guys let me know if this helped clarify anything. I have no idea if this clarified anything. I just want you to know that, like, I just wanted to get on here and say that everyone who attends the SSPX usually has discerned it and done their research. And they're not just being, like, given the finger to Rome and being like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. 
<coughs> usually it's because they're just trying their hardest to be good Catholics and to offer the sacrifice of the mass in the most reverent way possible and also to be fed. So, because that is the job's pre that is the shepherd's job is to feed the sheep. Right. So anyway, I, those are my thoughts. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a very blessed day. Bye.